Hey guys, welcome to Traditional Bow Hunting Wilderness Podcast. Today we've got a couple of jobs we're working on. I've been kind of in uh, knife mode here lately for some reason and uh, sold a bunch of stuff, bought a couple of new blades. Time to get those ready, get some chiefs made, get them stripped. So uh, what we're doing here today, I have my SE number six. I already made the sheath for it. I did this uh, a couple of days ago. I, I even did a video on showing you some of these sheaths while I was at it. Uh, but what we're going to do today is we are going to take this SE six and we're going to strip this coating off here. I don't like the coating on any blades. They hang up uh, when you're using them for stuff. Wood sticks to them, sap sticks to them. Everything sticks to this coating. I can't, I get, and they drag real heavy. So I take the coating off the blades. It's personal preference with it, whether you want to take the scales off and take the coating off the entire blade. On the handle part, it doesn't bother me having coating on that handle. So me, and I also, you guys know me, I, I could care less what something looks like. So what I do is I'm actually going to tape off right here, and I'm going to take the coating off of the whole blade, but I'm going to leave the coating on the handle part, again, because it, it protects it, and it, it doesn't bother me being there. So, uh, you know, so that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to tape this off. We're going to, I'll show you how we strip this coating off so that's one project we're going to do today and then after we coat it or after we get the coating off and get it done then we're going to actually put a patina on this uh, vinegar patina that's going to protect it which is how I like all all my wilderness blades to be basically it's how I make every 1095 knife I got I set up like that so we're going to do that whole process with this one today and then uh, my new knife I just got Another one, that one, like I said, I just got last week. This one just came yesterday. This is uh, Tops. This is their uh, Brothers of Bushcraft Fieldcraft knife, and it is uncoated. So this is a tumble finish on here, but it is uncoated. You can still see it's got the packing oil on it. Like I said, I just got this yesterday, and uh, we are going to uh, build a sheath for this knife, and then we are going to patina this knife as well, too. Sharp, patina it, sharpen it, do the whole deal, uh, but I'm going to walk you through making a case. It comes with this Kydex case already. It's not a horrible case. Uh, it's got this big clip on here, which makes it stick way out far from your body. It's rotatable. Uh, it's only held on by one screw. Um, I'm, I'm not a real fan of it. Plus, I'm left-handed, so this sheath does nothing. Plus, it only lets me carry it one way on my belt. That's a pretty flimsy... I'm just not sold on it, so I'm going to make my own sheath for it. Uh, one cool thing I see that it does come with is uh, it does come with, this is kind of neat, I've never seen one of these before, but it's actually two magnesium rods and a ferrocium rod. Probably not, and it's ultra lightweight, incredibly lightweight, much lighter than most of my, my ferrocium rods. So it's kind of neat, uh, and they do give you that little holder on it. So I may take that off of here and, uh, you know, reuse that on something different sometime or something, I don't know. Like I said, it's, uh, um, and actually I can't remember even how to fit that. It's, it was finicky to get it in and out of there, but there it is. But, like I said, kind of a cool feature on there. Not a horrible sheath if you don't make your own, but no thumb ramp to release from. Uh, no other options to carry it in, so we're going to build our own sheath for this uh, this uh, Fieldcraft Bob, this Bo Brothers of Bushcraft Tops knife. So we're going to do that today as well, too. So, I'm going to go ahead, bring you in here, and we're going to show you how we strip that off on there as far as setting up for uh, how to do a strip on the blade. Let me get this where you can see everything here, where we got going on. All right, and so that should probably do it pretty well right there, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah, that'll do it. But we're going to basically use this stripper right here, this stuff, just standard, uh, you know, regular stripping material. No, I'm not wearing gloves. No, I'm not wearing a mask. I don't do a ton of these. So, I mean, you only do a few of them each year. I'm not really worried about it, but I'm going to not get it on my hands. But we got to get that blade set. First thing we got to do is put some tape on there. So I have a piece here cut already that we're going to stick on there. I'm going to basically just line this up on that blade so that it covers where I do not want any of that stripper to hit. Right on there like that. And just wrap it right around so that it's going to protect that blade from where I do not want to have it any of that stripper contact with. I want that up a little higher like that. So then there's that and we're just going to leave that on there but that now should give us a nice fine line right there for where we don't want that stripper to come in contact with that. Want that fixed a little bit right there to that spot. Getting kind of picky here but I want it nice and even. And that there will work pretty good. I might put one more little piece right across the top of that right here. Let 
just to even that line out perfect on the back side of that, like I want. Right there, like that. So once we have that on there, and that seal on there, that tape's on there now, we're set. That's where we don't want that stripper to get to. Then what we're going to do is just give this stuff a quick shake, open it up, and we're going to grab a paper towel. My lazy way of doing it, just take a piece of paper towel, fold it over a couple of times like this. Just so you're, I'm using it almost like a paintbrush is what I'm doing. So then I got that set right there. I'm going to take that knife and then set this plate, this tray right here. I'm going to put a little bit of this right on here, like that. And then I'm going to use this like a paintbrush and smear it all the way around, all the way down. Get it all over that blade. As you can see, just smearing it all over the blade. Make sure it's all good and heavily coated. And I'm going to take that and set it right there. And I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Put a little bit of that on there so it sits. Spread it around. Just like that. Make sure it's good and even all over there. Make sure it's inside of the jimping on the back. And all over that blade. Like it is. And as you can see, fully coated. Both sides. And that's, we're done. Now I'm going to set that right there. This thing a little flimsy here, but... I'm going to set it there like that, and I'm going to let that just do what it's going to do for probably, I don't know, maybe 15 minutes or so. What time is it? Uh, it's 7 minutes after 4. I'm going to wipe a little bit of this access crap off here, just so it's not sitting there. It doesn't need to be. And I'm going to set that right in there. So we're going to let that just work and do its thing right there like that. Now we got to get into the holster or the sheath. So now what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to lay out my pieces for this, then I'm going to bring them in the house, cook them, and set them up. So knowing I want a pancake style holster on this, I'm going to just kind of build right here. I'm going to draw what I want. I'm going to want about that much right there. So with my pencil, which I have over here, and I'll bring you in a little closer so you can see here a little bit. Tripod doesn't go any higher, so I can't give you any more on that. Um, but that should let you see a little better. But basically, hang on, spin you a touch. But what we're going to do is I'm basically just looking at the distance, how wide of a piece I want for this knife. So we're looking at it. I want it even on both sides and enough room to work. So I'm going to say it's going to be right there for one edge. And we're probably going to want it to be about yay long right there. So now I got those kind of lines right on there, so I know where that's at. So if I look at that now, measure that, we're four and a half inches up. So I'm going to come up here, four and a half inches, I'm going to put another little mark. And then I'm just going to take my triangle, and I'm going to kind of draw that out real fast, just so I know where I'm cutting at, like that. And right there like that. So there's my piece that I want to cut out of there. Then, all I'm going to do, always put your knives back in your sheath. You don't want to leave a knife here and then be working and smash into it. Had it happened before, not good. So make a point to put it back in the sheath or get it out of the way when you're doing this. But now, all I'm going to do is basically just take a straight edge. I'm going to set a straight edge right on that spot right there. I'm going to just run my carpenter's knife down at a couple of quick slices here just to kind of score that, just like cutting glass almost. A couple of score marks like that, and that's good. Got it right there. I'm going to come into this side. I'm going to do the same kind of thing here. Put a couple of score marks on this one. Right where that edge is. Hold that there. Score that. And then I'm going to snap that right out of there. I'm just going to snap it. There it is. Bring it here. There's one piece. So if you look at that, you have that piece there that's what I'm going to be building basically okay you can see what that is now I'm going to cut another one of these pieces so that I have one for the top one for the bottom to sandwich them together once I got that done uh, I'll bring you in a house we'll start on the next step but I'm going to take I'm going to turn you off while I go ahead and cut that and get that ready and then we'll come right back okay it's been about 
about 12 minutes or so. I got the Kydex pieces cut for that over there. Uh, and now we're going to check on this blade and see how this is doing and how this coating is. Uh, I just used a standard little $1.99 scraper with a razor blade in it. I like these because it gives you some a little more surface area to hold on to. Uh, but any razor blade, anything will work. We're just going to see if any of that's going to come off yet. Uh, yeah, and it looks like it's starting to a little bit here. I can definitely scrape some of that. You can see that mark on there where I can scrape it. But we're going to still give it just a touch longer. I'm going to put more of it back on there, spread that around a little bit. Um, but we're going to give it a few more minutes here and see, because we want that to come off pretty easy. So we're going to wait, let that sit just a little bit longer and see what it does. But that's all we're basically looking for. You don't want to get that stuff on you like that. If you do, just make sure you get it off right away because it's going to irritate your skin. Um, or wear gloves. Gloves is probably the right thing to do, but that's, you know, I'm, I'm just not in the mood to put gloves on. And I'm not going to get that stuff all over me if I don't have to. So, uh, but we're going to give a couple more minutes. We'll come back and check on it. As far as the Kydex pieces, um, both of them are completely cut got them set got them ready all we're gonna do we're just i don't want to walk away from this yet i'm um, going to house and cook this so we're just going to give it a minute for that to finish and then uh, we'll get that set once i have that knife prepped then i'm, I'm multitasking then i can go in the house where i got to cook the kydex for the to make that sheath for that bob knife and get that sheath set for this while i'm doing that i can let the vinegar patina already get started on that knife during that process so we're going to finish that up first before we head in the house so we'll come back in a couple minutes and see how that's doing Okay, we gave it about another five minutes here. We're gonna go ahead and see what we can get off of this. So I'm gonna take that blade, and you can see that it scrapes that stuff right off of there. So I'm just peeling that coating off. And if I leave it sit longer, it'd probably come off easier. I'm just kind of anal. And you know, I don't wanna stand out here right now, so I'm just kind of picking it off there. Get that off. Now you'll notice Essie's got this amazing primer on there. That primer is incredible in its own right. So you almost don't even have to patina it. Uh, that primer that's on there is phenomenal. Um, now careful as you're doing this too, as you're pushing this, because there is a sharp blade right there. You don't want to get yourself cut or hurt. So make sure you're paying attention to the, which direction you're going. You don't want to go like this and end up slamming into that knife edge. Um, but it's just a matter of fine tuning and getting all that stuff off of there that you want. Some of it can get sticky. There we go. So you're going to peel it, just scrape this stuff off, get this finish off of here and off the spine, off pretty much everywhere on here. It's going to be there. You got to get it, scrape it off. It comes off like, a, as you can see, pretty easy. And then same thing on this side. We're just going to scrape this side off too. Getting rid of all that crap. You can see it peel right up off of there. So we're going to get all that off. And then once we have this all cleared off, then we're going to have to do a little finish sanding. So I'm going to finish getting the rest of this stripper, uh, this coating off of here real quick as best I can. And uh, then I'll bring you back and show you here in a minute. And I'll show you how we finish it up. Okay, now we got that coating pretty much off of there. You can see, I mean, it's flat. I scraped it. That's just a little bit left on there. Uh, now we're going to get this off. We're going to sand this is how we're going to end up getting this off here. So real simple. Uh, just taking a piece of, what is this, 180 grit. You can use 200 grit, 400 grit. To me, it doesn't matter. I'm patina -ing. Putting a patina on it anyway, um, so it's all good. But... Uh, you want to be careful here again you have a sharp knife so you don't want to sit here and just start sanding away on this be smart put that knife down on an edge like this somewhere where that edge is protected so that you can't get cut and if you're up here roll it up that way but that way you cannot get cut on that edge you don't want to just start sanding on there where you can get cut on there so be safe when you're doing it take that i take it like this and i just sand away and that stuff comes off pretty quick and easy as you'll see here Takes it right off pretty fast. Takes that primer coating off. Now Essie uses an awesome primer they put on here. Uh, they put it on there for two reasons. One of them is because of the fact that that primer helps protect against rust and stuff after the coating does wear in certain spots. So they do a great job at that. 
I also think they put that primer on there because it hides any of the imperfections, which you can see in a blade a little bit there. Again, none of it matters. These are the, some of the best knives in the world. Um, and like I said, it's gonna, you're going to patina it or coat it anyway, and it's not really dimples. You can't feel them. Uh, just, you know, it's, it's no big deal. It's just where that stuff sits in there. But, uh, but like I said, don't be alarmed at it. Now, if you wanted to make this a super shiny finish, you're going to have to do a touch more sanding to remove those on there. But all I need to do is just get that, that, uh, black stuff and then get rid of that, uh, you know, that coating that's on there. Uh, you'll do, you will notice that it took off that SE. You can barely see it where it says SE on there. I don't care. That doesn't matter to me. Again, I'm looking for a working blade. If you want to leave that SE on there, you got to probably do a little softer finer sandpaper and take your time around it but again it doesn't matter this whole thing is going to have a patina on it anyway and so so to me it doesn't make any difference so i'm going to finish sanding this off off the spine that kind of stuff and i'll show you what it looks like before we patina it okay as you can see we got that sanded off real good there um you know all that finishes off on there a little bit there now when you do the back of it too um, you want to make a point and not, you know, you don't want to go like this because you could round that edge off uh, with the sandpaper, especially if you're like me and you're using a heavy grit. Um, but what, so what I do is I just take it, basically set sandpaper on the ground and just run it back and forth like this a few times to get that finish off the back. It only takes a couple quick swipes, but it's better than trying to do it with your hand where you're going to basically be working the edges, unless you want those edges rounded. Uh, and then inside your chimping, just take your sandpaper, fold it in half. Just make sure you get that stuff out of there like that real quick. I mean, this whole process takes probably seven, eight minutes just to get that finish off of there uh, real good so that it'll take a patina real nice. But the difference when you're using that knife, the difference in not having it coated versus coated is amazing. The coating is good because it does protect against, uh, uh, you know, rust and things like that. And, you know, that's, that's the purpose they put it on here. You know, it's going to wear through. But... The functionality of this blade being uncoated and how well it works and how things don't stick and get caught on there, it's just a, it's an amazing difference. So uh, that's my advice. And then, so once you get it done, uh, which we are right now done with that, then we find where the tape is, pull off that piece of tape, grab this piece of tape, pull this off, and there's our finished product right there that's now ready for a patina. Sweet, simple, easy, functional. Uh, once that patina is in gray, that'll look really nice. I still left it on the handle, but now that's going to be an amazing knife. So we're going to bring it in the house. We're going to start to patina on this one, and then we are going to go ahead and jump right into uh, doing the uh, sheath for the other one. So I'll bring it in there, and we'll go check it out. Okay, we're in, getting ready to set the Kydex for this. Like I said, I'm not going to run you through a whole how to make a Kydex knife sheath. I'm just doing both at the same time, so I'm showing you a little bit. I have videos on here that will show you every aspect, where to drill the holes, how to set them up, and do that for both guns and knives. So those are out there. But, got the oven going. We're about to throw our couple pieces of Kydex in here for our knife sheath. We're going to let them cook. I cannot put the patina on this one until I'm done making the sheath because I need the knife to actually mold the sheath with. So that one's on hold. We'll come back to that one patina-wise. But we are going to put that patina on this SE6 right now. And uh, so I'm going to bring you over here and set you up. Where we're going to do that at, this is a very simple process. There is no right or wrong way to do it. No, uh, no fancy anything. What we're going to do is we are going to use my favorite, which is just basically vinegar. Buy this stuff right at uh, Walmart. If you get it in the canning section, you get this whole gallon for like three bucks. So uh, I use a lot of it. Take a piece of paper towel. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. No, no fancy, you know, it, anything. Just piece of paper towel. Take the uh, vinegar. Move dinner out of the way there. And then going to just kind of crinkle this up. And then pour some vinegar on it. Okay, let it get soaked all the way through. So it's there like that. Smear it around a little bit. So that the whole entire thing is completely wet, is what you want to do. So it's soaked wet. Take your knife, lay your blade right on there, like that. Tap it in there. Make sure it's covering the whole thing. Make sure it's getting the back of it good. Flip it up and around once more. Tap it. By doing this, what you do is you're giving it different patterns. Okay, you can see the ripple effect of what's, let me bring a little bit of that out, but you can see that different ripple effect in there. That's giving it different pattern as far as the uh, colors and this, you know, you know, just the way it's gonna patina, I like it. You can also take these and soak them and put them in a vinegar patina, like a vinegar bath. Uh, with some, you know, where you get it almost, you know, get it nice and warm, stick the blade in there for 15 minutes, it'll come out a nice even gray if you want. I, I like the effects of the different patterns and stuff. 
Um, and you don't want to wrap too many wraps around it. See how this is, you can almost still see it through there? That's kind of what you're looking for, because if you wrap it too much, air can't get to it, and the air won't actually make the patina uh, is strong or do what you want. So I like to have it where it's not too overwrapped. A little bit on both sides. Give it a little bit of dancing around on there like that. So it gets a little bit of character to it. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit just like that. I'm going to let it sit there for about, a, probably about, uh, the total time is going to be about two hours. Then I'm just going to leave that soaked there. Now what I might do in a half hour is peel or unwrap this and then wrap it again and tap it a few more times. And then a half hour later, take it off, wrap it again. You don't have to do that, but what it does is it gives it cool character to it. Uh, gives it different lines, shapes, different shades, uh, and does some neat stuff to it. So that's why I do it, but that's basically it. Now we're going to let that sit there. We're going to let it soak. And uh, we'll come back to it in about a half hour. We'll see what it looks like and go from there. In the meantime, I'm going to start working on that sheath for that, uh, for that field craft. Okay, that's been sitting. we got the Kydex holster made here on there. Not made, but I have the Kydex cooked and molded to it. We're going to pop this here. Uh, I did flip it once a few minutes ago. We're going to pull this off. You can see it's starting to take some pretty cool colors to it. Different shapes. We're going to take this. We're going to wrap it on there one more time. Slightly different type of a set here. When I say slightly different, meaning just because it's going to connect in different places on here. So we're going to put that on there. We're going to wrap it around. And then we're going to let that just sit again. Now I'm going to let this sit, like I said, for, for a lot longer. I'm going to let, you know, I mean, we're about half hour into this is all we are. And so now I'm going to let this sit again. I'll probably check it again in another hour and adjust it again, you know, give it something for a little more twist, a little more character to it. But that's all there is to it. Just, you know, every... Every half hour, every hour, whatever you want, you just flip it, and it takes about two, three hours total time. That patina will last on there for an awful long time. You actually probably never have to do another one if you don't want to, but if you do, you leave the patina that's on it, and if it starts to wear off, you just re-patina right over it. So it's real easy to maintain, very simple to use. We'll come back and see how that looks later on. Uh, as far as the Kydex and getting that set, I have... That molded right there, so you can see that sheath. It's still a little warm because I just pulled it out, but I'm going to now go drill all my holes, get that trimmed and cut and set up and everything, and when I have that done, I'll do the patina on this knife. So we'll bring you back here and check on that in a little while. Okay, just came in. i got to clean this off here, but I just got done making uh, the sheath. That's basically a sheath. i got it all bolted together. All i got to do now is rinse it out, clean it out, and then uh, lace everything on it. Uh, but there is the sheath uh, for that Topps Fieldcraft. Sweet thumb break, sweet easy. Like I said, you can still see the Kydex stuff in there. Got to wash that out, but we're going to take a minute here and take a look and see how our knife is looking here for our SE number 6. It's been uh, about an hour and 15 minutes since last time we looked. And you can see that it's starting to take on a really cool gray... Uh, look to it here. Got a nice look. We're going to then take and we're going to wrap it up here again and do some more with it. So I'm going to take this and like I said there's no rhyme or reason to this. There is no specific way that it has to be. Um, so I'm going to put it on there like that. Tap it around a little more. This time I'm going to run it a little uh, less wrapped so I get more airflow. As you can see the blade through there it's going to give me a little bit more airflow in there so I'm going to run that that way. I'm going to try to just crinkle that up a little bit, like I said, so I get a little different effect to it. To how the things are going to pattern out. But there is no art for, you know, it's, it's just is what it is. If you want different colors or different uh, patterns and stuff on here, just kind of mix it up a little bit, play with it a little bit, change it around. And we're going to throw that there, we're going to let that sit. Now I'm going to flip that over that way just a hair so that it stays together. But we're going to let that sit for another probably half hour, see what it looks like, and then we'll check it out. We'll probably be done then. Okay, now it's been a total of about two hours for this one here as far as setup and that kind of stuff. Um, I did change it once around again, but you can see here, if you look at that, see how you're starting to get some of that orange starting to show through? It's because you can see I'm down to just one layer wrap on this, just a very thin, light, layer on there and it's letting that air get in there once i start seeing that that's when i know that the colors are starting to come through and i pretty much know i'm done so when i peel this off and we look at this you can see some of the different uh color designs and the things that are coming through there like that how it kind of pops and comes to life. Now this blade is fully protected for all aspects. It's rust proof. We put a forced patina on it so it's not going to rust. This is pretty durable. I'm going to say 
for thickness for thickness probably as durable as uh, the coating is it was originally on there but this obviously being much thinner than the coating it will eventually wear off but the good news is is when this does wear off all you do is what you just did take a piece of paper towel and hit it with a little bit of uh, vinegar and wrap it around it for another hour and leave it sit there and it'll do that now to stop activating this vinegar that's in here you want to rinse it you can see here in the background I got that uh, that Bob uh, tops uh, B.O.B. Uh, field craft starting right now. I got a patina started on that one. But to slow this down, you just basically hit it with some water, just like that. Take a piece of paper towel and just run that across there to wipe off any excess of that. So you get a little bit like that. And that there, once you start getting it to a point where it's all, you know, you got all that excess top off, it'll start coming clean just like that. There it is. See where you're not getting any more coming off. And that there is what we call a forced patina on a knife blade. Sweet, simple, easy to do, fully protected now. Now all I gotta do is just uh, touch up my edge on there and put an edge back on there, but now that knife is protected for all practical purposes from rusting, anything like it. And like I said, it gives it a very nice, neat character, uh, kind of, you know, unique appearance to it. I really like it. So, uh, but that will cut a lot better. It works a lot better. I love it. And like I said, if you take it out and you, you know, beat on it and baton with it and you're, you know, running it like crazy uh, and it starts to wear any of that off, just rewrap another one around there again. Me, about once, if I'm using them a lot, like even my knives that are in my pockets that I carry. Now this one I've only been carrying for about a month but even these when he's once that you know about with everyday use a patina I only have to replace it about once every probably four or five months I gotta just take that knife out of my pocket uh take that thing and just you know grab a piece of paper towel stick it on there wrap it around for a second like that pat it down on there maybe give it another little twist if you want whatever you want to do set it there leave it there for an hour come back it's done so it's a great way to protect your knife and get the most function out of your blade so there you go hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll talk to you soon bye